Welcome to the Cinemarijuana Theater. Filmstain.com presents. It's still Lost Pelicula Sub to the Cinemarijuana Theater. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, this is still yeah. a regular show. That was different. That's right, that's right. Apologies. We've actually got quite a bit on the slate today, so uh, I'm getting them all mixed up in my head. Welcome to Lost Pelicula Sabados Gigantes at the Cinemarijuana Theater. Um, this, this shit lords of cinematic scrutiny. Uh, it's hot as fucking hell. Yeah. yeah, it's a record-setting 103 degrees here in the Cinema Marijuana Theater. Mm. Um, yeah, so uh, today we are here to talk about the latest selection from 1940, selected by John, The Thief of Baghdad. So, uh, yeah, let's just get introductions out of the way then. Yes, for yes. the Cinema Marijuana yes. Theater, I'm Ed. I'm Kenzie. I'm John. I'm a lot. Or, no, I'm Chris. Well, you, uh, very funny. Very funny. All right, so, yes, from 1940... The Thief of Baghdad. We See, are starting with Underberg, some look how faithful I am. Delicious Underberg mm. to get things yep. rolling. Um, this was part of our uh, free-for-all round that we're in the middle of right now, no theme. This was John's pick, right? Yeah, Thanks, that's John. Right. Yeah. yeah, you guys are welcome. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, there's a few seeds and stems on this yeah. one while Kenzie Lettuce. wraps for Underberg. Yep. Uh, del- directed by uh, Ludwig Berger, Michael Powell, and others. Uh, written by Miles Mailson, uh, Lajos Biro, and others. Hmm. Um, it uh, had an interesting production we'll get into. Starring Conrad Veidt, Sabu, June Dupree, and uh, yeah, like as you said, released in 1940. And, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. I'm drinking this now. Cheers. Cheers. Bottoms oh, up. Yeah. We'll be Cheers. joining you on the next one. Uh, and you, of course, can have double Underberg because you're just that special. Dunderberg. Uh, yeah. All right. So um, I guess three minutes, three words about this movie, shall we? Yes, let's do it. Once well, Little Milk Forks yeah. Over That Cap. Don't we need synopsis? Uh, yeah, there it is. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Yeah. You're getting ahead of myself a- as wheels are coming off. pretty much requisite here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Little Milk. Okay. Give it to us. This movie... Um, stole its plot line from Aladdin. <laughs> Pretty much exactly. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, uh, I think the chronologic, uh, that might be a little bit off chronologically, but yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. If yeah. you've seen Aladdin, you've seen this movie. Yeah, it's it, it really is Aladdin. Even I know that Aladdin stole it from Thief of Baghdad, but it is essentially Aladdin. There was, uh, yeah, obviously some changes. Um, a few, a handful of changes in there, but... Uh, it's more of an inspiration. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's these tales going back, the Thousand One Arabian Nights and all that. These are sort of all tied in together. So it's yeah. sort of like uh, how Disney movies are based on, you know, fairy tales and stuff. It's sort of all coming from the same source. I was going to theory. ask, yeah, if there was some specific uh, legend or piece of folklore that this was based on. I mean, not specific, specific. Like, I don't know. Or was this concocted? Was this was this uh, story a product of uh, British imperialism? Well, no, I think it's uh, a little bit of both. I mean, I think it comes from the Thousand One Arabian Nights sort of as an inspiration, which is a collection of tales set in uh, the Middle East. Uh, but then I think overall the main plot is sort of an original um, kind of concoction. I'm pretty sure. Anyway. Okay. I'm so a uh, confirmation on that, actually. Try a little of column A and a little from column B, as the exactly. genie would have sung about. Oh, there was a 1924 version of the film, too. <coughs> um, so that's all spell. So also adapted basically from A Thousand and One Nights. Did anybody complain book. about remakes then? Hmm. It seems like it was kind of par for the course back then. I mean, it just seems like... Because especially with the whole going from silent to sound... Yeah, and then from black and white to color. Yeah, it kind of seemed like once you got that new technology, it was kind of fair game. Yeah, so maybe like today, if you can do it in three D, it's fair game for a remake or something. I guess mm. so. Hmm. Interesting, very interesting. All right. Uh, okay. Well, I guess uh, we're gonna do. We're gonna get right into three minutes, three words here for this motherfucker. Yeah. See what people think, John. As you picked it, I guess we should start with you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, um, I had a hard time choosing which movie to show for this series because there is no theme, as as you just mentioned. Um, I was almost going to go for one of my fuck you picks 
because that theme may or may not ever come back. Yeah. But um, tough to say. Yeah, but Let's I didn't, hope not. I didn't want to lose it in case it did. Plus, I didn't think it was the right crowd uh, for my fuck you picks mm-hmm. because it was it was it was a light, light lightly attended affair. So no I've had, way. Well, I think there was. Um, there were a lot of people here because we thought no one was going to be here. No, that was this. That, that was, was this week. That was this week. Didn't we? It was because oh, we're doing right. it on the wrong day it. today. Yeah, yeah we didn't do it. I think it was. Cut all that out. I mean, not not that it was empty, but just that there was. I know Condi wasn't here. There was. It was. I think it was. It was five. It was only five or six. Yeah. So it was. It, not that it was an empty place, but it wasn't. It, it wasn't enough for the one. There's at least two people who I want to show my fuck you pick to who weren't here. So anyways, getting back on the Thief of Baghdad. Uh, I've been a huge fan of this movie ever since I saw it in the Criterion section at Fry's. Um. I've seen it a few times because it's actually I actually don't own it, which I need to fix. I'm waiting for the, I was waiting for the Blu-ray release. Is there one on the way? I, I'm pretty sure it actually is. It's either on its way or it's already out. Okay. But I know it took a while, which is why I was holding off. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, certainly it deserves the treatment. Oh, for sure. Uh, but it is available on the Hulu uh, Criterion channel. So if you subscribe to Hulu.com, that's where we watched it. Uh, and although so, it might be a good time to mention Criterion is getting their own channel. Yeah, they're, they're gonna Hulu so. once they start up their own channel, uh, all their their movies are leaving. It's, yeah, Hulu. It's, it's gonna be rad. And it's apparently, totally rad. according to what I read, they're gonna have all of their movies. Like if they've got the rights to it, it's gonna be up on their channel, so rad. you'll be able to stream every single movie they have. Which Hulu's got a lot. I mean, it's, it's got a, it's not a extra ton of them, like, but. Uh, well, because they'll have some that aren't available that they don't be, have the rights to release. It'll be a have. separate subscription fee. Right. Though, oh, well, oh, sure, yeah. fuck. So, yeah, so it's going to be a separate thing. <laughs> but, but goodbye, Hulu. <laughs> Dude, well, <laughs> <laughs> Hulu has other things besides Criterion. Uh, yeah, this is just a great, fun movie, though. I mean, I've always loved uh, the Indiana Jones movies, uh, any of the Sinbad movies, the Hercules movies, any kind of these adventure things, and movies that use those uh, Ray Harryhausen special effects. Uh, I mean, you got genies, you got statues coming to life, you got a flying horse, yeah, flying um, carpet, yeah. It's it's everything you could want in an action adventure. It does. It's got this great because it's a very early color film, so it reminds you of the Wizard of Oz, and it's like they really were really impressed by color because it was brand new, and they yeah. really want to show up. I love early Technicolor movies because they're like. It isn't just a movie in color. They want to knock you on your ass with the color. There's a richness. Yes, it's very vibrant. Uh, on the pro- I know Robin Hood. Yeah, yeah, Robin Hood's another Robin great Hood example. Is, a, is another one that's like yeah, that. Yeah, it's just amazing, amazing colors. Uh, Excalibur is another one that's got really good. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a fun movie I've always loved, and I thought it was a great opportunity to show it to everybody here because since it is older from 1940, I don't think it's as well-known as a lot of other movies. I mean, I guess it originally got... Play on TV back in the old days of the fifties and sixties in a syndication package, but a lot of people don't think I've seen it. So, I uh, just wanted to get people to check it out. <clears throat> Fun adventure movie. So, uh, my three words would be it would be um, the greatest adventure. <laughs> <laughs> it's what lies ahead, isn't it? For all uh, of us. All right, Chris, uh, give us your three minutes, three words on this film. All right, let me uh, hit this. Yeah, do that. Give Chris a few extra seconds on the. Oh yeah, <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the timer. Restart the, the timer due him. to the hit. I won't need him. Uh, yeah. So this movie was pretty fucking funny. I was laughing a lot through it. Uh, the genie's cool. He's like a real fucking dick to Aladdin in this one, even though I know that he's not Aladdin. But <laughs> <laughs> he might as well be. He might as well be. And I shall refer to him as <laughs> as so from <laughs> here, from here in for the remainder uh, of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pretty weird, kind of, kind of interesting uh, take on it. I mean, it really. I found myself over and over and over again just comparing it to Aladdin and going, "Oh, this is what's different. This is what's different. Mm-hmm. This is what's different." I think it's hard to not have seen this movie first and then enjoy the plethora of versions that have come after it. I guess um, rather than seeing it afterwards. But yeah, that's what I got. So pretty cool. I could see why it was copied. I could see why it was emulated or whatever you want to call it. Um, I could see why, uh, yeah, it's it's a real classic, man. Uh, well done all around. Acting great, special effects great. The scenery is amazing. The color is fucking goddamn gorgeous, like you're saying. Uh, you almost, it almost feels fake because it's so vivid and vibrant. It's so everything. Everything is such a bright clean color uh it's yeah it's, it's like the closest incredible. thing like a live action movie has like achieving like an animated film look. yeah yeah like it's got, almost got this feel is. like you'd swear it was like almost like this close to being like an animated movie yeah even their expressions feel very kind of exacted and i, I guess that's that old time theater it's partially maybe the ultimate because it's an old movie yeah yeah yeah, yeah but just i think i think with the there's a lot of matte painting and stuff too right and there's a lot of things just add to it it's a very yeah. easy transition for mm-hmm. uh to a- animation uh and video games 
uh, fantastic. Most video importantly, games. Uh, third third sold uh, uh, most sold uh, or highest grossing video game for Genesis after Sonic was, One and Sonic Two was, was Aladdin. Aladdin. Yeah, uh, one you know. of the few Genesis games, in my opinion, was better on the Genesis than uh, than it was on the Super Nintendo. Uh, it was. We it were really just was. playing it the you other know, day. The, the control moved more freely. I don't know. Yeah. The, the graphics were better. I think it was made for Genesis and ported ported to over. Super mm, that Nintendo, makes sense. Yeah. 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 Um, I could be wrong though. Uh, the, Great I don't know. game. Cool. Yeah, great game. Cool movie. <laughs> uh, you can take one thing away from this podcast. The Aladdin. Aladdin for the sake of Genesis. A great, great, great game. Great fucking game. Yeah. Great game. Um, that's about it. It's a, it's a cute story. If you wanted to see a classic, um, this would be a good choice if you've seen other classics. I'd say it's comparable kind of to like Wizard of Oz. It's a good Very classic G-rated. movie you like watch with the kids. Mm-hmm. Or if you want something that's going to be like old time but not boring. Yeah, not very boring. I mean, could it, it be it a good a movie to watch with the kid? The, the Charlie kid. Chaplin film? Uh-huh. Uh, it, you no, know, sorry. you could watch a movie with the kid. <laughs> you could listen to the audio of one and then watch the... I don't think that would work. But right. Wasn't that Jackie Coogan, Uncle Fester? Yes. Oh, all right. Well, he was. He was the kid. Well, anyway, uh, uh, my three words are great Genesis game. Nice. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. Don't, don't forget, internet. Great Genesis game. Yeah. Um, all right, you're up. All right, my turn. Uh, yeah, this was pretty interesting to behold. Uh, it made me think of a couple. There was a couple of things I was uh, reflecting on watching this film. Um, well, I mean, right off the bat, uh, I, it was great. I mean, really, I don't even I don't even need to spend any time talking about that. I mean, the film wouldn't be... It's 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 evident to me seeing it now, or not having seen it before, but I can see why it would be as influential as it was, especially in 1940. Any kid at the time, you know, any shit, any kid, any kid really should be able to see this and be like, oh, dude, like that's really fucking rad. So the movie was great. Conrad Veidt is kind of an interesting, because um, we've seen a couple of films with him. We did... Uh, we watched Casablanca recently, right? He's the bad yeah. guy in that. We saw he? that, yeah, during the Ken, the, the, the revival um, series of the Ken. Did a, yeah, we went to the side. It was, it was the first time I'd seen that, and he was a real scumbag, and he <laughs> was a double scumbag in this. And I just yeah. was thinking that because we, he was from the silent era. He was a silent star, uh, most notably. Uh, uh, the the uh, the what was it the the clown who cried no that's the Jerry Lewis one what was it the the clown who laughed uh, the clown who the laughed. man who the laughed man, the man who laughed that's yeah right. uh, with Conrad Veidt uh, which was sort of the inspiration for the Joker character um, and of course the wonderful but I will never watch it again in a million billion years uh, Cabinet of Dr Caligari yeah he's pretty rad he made the trans I just couldn't believe he made the transition so well because here he is he's just a real son of a bitch in this movie and just so good at it. So Conrad Veidt really is somebody who, man, I'm watching this kid. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think this kid star is on the <laughs> rise. Hands <laughs> uh, up, Hollywood. I'm, yeah. I'm keeping, I'm keeping, uh, keeping tabs on him. This bird's going to fly. Uh, the other thing I was kind of thinking was that, it, you know, 1940 might actually be an interesting theme because uh, among, you know, film people, 1939 is often sort of, you know, thrown about as the greatest year of, in film because you had like those ten best picture nominees. I mean, you had everything in thirty nine. You had you know the fucking you had stagecoach. You had you know the fucking Wizard of Oz. You had the Gone with the Wind. You had all this crap coming out in thirty nine, um, and so it's kind of heralded uh, as that. But like I was like, well, so it's nineteen forty now, and you know the people aren't maybe aren't quite as dazzled. They've seen Wizard of Oz. This is an almost better successor. Yeah, like it almost made me think of like Pinocchio. How like Pinocchio. Is a better is a is a better and more remarkable film than Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, hmm. um, but Snow White you know gets all the attention because it was the first feature length barely animated film. Yeah, but really, I mean, there's a lot of rotoscoping going on. Not that it's not great, but the real coup is, is Pinocchio. Well, because um, I mean, if people are trying to top themselves, you know, you're going to try to make yeah. the next thing kind of better. You're going to try to like obviously something like Walt Disney going to be trying to outshine everything yeah. he does. Uh, but I don't think Pinocchio resonates today with people as much as I feel it should artistically. I think that Disney in that early time had so much rad stuff going. on. <laughs> so yeah, uh, my three words are Pinocchio, <laughs> F Snow White. That's four words. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, my three words for this film are absolutely must see. No, oh, good. Nice. There we go. All right. All right. Kenzie. The the finale. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The one you've all been waiting for. I took lots of notes. Excellent. Let's hear them. Okay. 
So at first, <clears throat> I really didn't think I was going to like this movie because it was old. I don't know if I was having issues paying attention at first or like how quickly I realized that the movie was Aladdin. <laughs> But like it really didn't have my attention until I figured that out. And Which then I was it, like, "Oh, hey, wait a minute! Yeah, because it's Aladdin. early on. Cause, well, because at first something happened. I was like, "Hey, that's like Aladdin." And then I kind of like realized, like, "Wait, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this Aladdin. is Aladdin." I had the same thing. I was gonna. I was like, "Oh, I was like Jafar, huh?" I'm like, yeah. right, now I see where Disney got that." And then it was like, "Oh, wait, it's the whole movie." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, also, speaking of Jafar, I think the Disney version of Jafar is like so perfect. If they were watching that movie and then were like putting it, animating it, I think they did a great job. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you mean you think the They're animated representation, yeah. like it look, it had a similar look yes. and a similar creepiness? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I thought they did a good job. Um, so that was cool. Um, what else do my notes say? Oh, obviously I like Aladdin better. That's true. I still like Aladdin better. It was more songs. Yeah, there yeah. are songs. Aladdin's actually my favorite Disney movie. Um, it's, 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 as far as I'm concerned, with the uh, with a, a couple of exceptions, the last great Disney film. Yeah. Um, also, yeah, for being the 1940s, it actually really is enjoyable, even for someone like me who doesn't like movies, and especially not old movies. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, uh, The King Was Hot. And actually, <laughs> Abu, too, in an underage foreign kind of way, was also hot. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> Wait, the monkey? Yeah, yeah. The, well, the kid that turned into <laughs> the yeah. monkey. He turned to a dog. Yeah, a dog. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, he, he was didn't say he was homicidal. He, he, no, no, he didn't. Suicidal. <laughs> Genocidal. <laughs> Sabu. No, he didn't. Uh, he turned into a monkey in the Disney film. I, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what but I was saying. He turned into an that. elephant yeah. in the Disney film. The, no, the monkey was always a monkey. No, no. What I mean is the character turned into a monkey. Right, I got gotcha. you. It's like, yeah, it's like the translation. Even whatever. the names kind of. I should have used Sabu's theme song for this podcast. No. Damn it, Hookah no. Blues. Okay, sorry. Um, you can close with it. No. I I also noticed and appreciated and loved the colors, especially in the beginning half of the movie. Um, yeah. So I actually like noticed that, and I was like, hey, that's like really cool. <laughs> So, <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Normally I wouldn't give a shit. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I think the romance was more on display in the Disney one too. Like there was a romance at the you know at stake in this film, but it, yeah. I don't think it was up front. You didn't get to know Princess Jasmine in this film like you did in, hmm. in Disney. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. You don't get to see much of her so doing that, the same thing. That, that, doing that could. Yeah, that, that could factor into maybe. Yeah. Um, my three words are. Extremely enjoyable and fun, and apostrophe fun. Mm -hmm. Awesome, mm -hmm. and fun. There we go. All right, cool. All right, um, all right. Well, um, let's see. You got any? Uh, I got a few dank nugs for this one. Uh, first off, I want to point on a personal note. Uh, there's a little movie called "The uh, The Thief and the Cobbler," uh, which was released in 1993. It's an animated movie, but they actually started production of it in the 70s. It just uh, hit developmental hell. Uh, Huh. Really hard, and it was only, in fact, the release of Disney's Aladdin that got them to finish this movie. But, huh. but that movie was also that movie inspired the look and a lot of other because that movie is also based on the same story this one is. Sure. So a lot of the look for Aladdin and some of the characterization came from the Thief and the Cobbler too. I think. Oh really? So yeah, if you watch that one and this one, like these are almost kind of the, the parents that then gave birth to, to Aladdin. Aladdin. Hmm. Uh, it would be the child because that's, that's really. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so some uh, interesting facts in this movie. This is the very first movie to use green screen, or blue screen, actually. First movie to use blue screen. Which I thought was pretty well fucking done. It was yeah. really well done. Yeah. Yeah. For the age, and they were literally the first movie to do use it. They yeah. did a great yeah. job. Kinda, yeah, you, you were kind of yeah, out yeah. of the gate. Yeah. Like, I mean, That's Chris, another thing that even I noticed. Yeah, so, I mean, the special there effects for the era were very impressive. Mm -hmm. When that yeah. horse was running around and stuff, like, that could look so hokey, but yeah. it, really, it actually looked really it good. great. Uh, yeah, filming for this movie began in Britain, uh, but then World War II started, and due to the Blitz, they actually had to move production to America. Uh, so oh, I it, believe it. It, it took so long. Jeez. World War II kind of interrupted this movie uh, so much that they actually had to reshoot the earlier scenes because Sabu had gotten a few inches taller uh. <laughs> because wow. he was still growing up. So the earlier scenes they couldn't use anymore because he'd gotten visibly like noticeably larger since mm. they shot the earlier parts. There was also uh, the opening scene when the princess, uh, which, when she comes in, has to avert their gaze. There's a train of horses that comes in before, and those were all female riders because all the male riders who normally have those parts been sent off to fight. 
Oh, crazy. Mm-hmm. In, in World War II. Mm. Um, another interesting That's fact sad. is yeah. that Vivian Lee was originally cast as the princess. Really? Uh, yeah, but uh, she ended up uh, getting out of the part for Gone with the Wind. Yeah, I was going to say, because that came out the year before. I mean, yeah, they must was. have been, sh- sh- well, I, I, maybe at some point they were shooting concurrently. Well, yeah. I think it was something where she signed on to this. None, neither one had started production. She signed to this one, and then she found afterwards. She probably auditioned for both. Right. Mm-hmm. Signed on for this one, then found out she got the part for Gone with the Wind. You know, honestly, as rad as this film is, I think she made the right choice. I think oh, so, yeah. too. Yeah. Well, because uh, but certainly, you know, Scarlett O'Hara is the media role. Well, <laughs> for, yeah. Uh, for, I mean, for being a woman, you know, in Hollywood, yeah. I, she fucking A. Yeah. Well, like and and, and, and that movie is obviously that one. much more widely remembered than this mm-hmm. one is, uh, too. Even so. if it's reviled today by a, f- a faction of people. It still has that thing going for it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of big names attached to this. The Corda Brothers. Yeah, well, another say Eric thing. Powell or something. Yeah, uh, there was the a Powell lot of directors. Because um, Emmerich or whatever yeah, the fucking name Yeah, the... Um, let me get... Uh, it kept going through directors. It had six different directors. It was like The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, Ludwig Berger, wow. Michael Powell, Tim Whelan, Michael Alexander Powell. Corda. Uh, so is it, isn't it Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger? Is that who... I think Weren't they this is a fucking team? So, I'm pretty sure that it? I think so. And then uh, Zoltan Korda, who's Alexander Korda's brother, worked on it for a bit. And then William Cameron Menzies. Uh, it was just such a huge production. I mean, partially due to the war, but also like uh, the original idea was for it to be uh, a black and white epic. And then it was changed to being a colored uh, uh, fantasy. And it was only really because the storyboards were so engaging and so colorful that it convinced them to do it in color. Because it was right on that cusp of color movies, so they could have gone one way or the other. Yeah, Emmerich Pressburger. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah, they so were behind they... a lot of important shit, too, back in the day, those guys. And then, because uh, I have uh, the Criterion set, too, they put out the, uh, what is it, Alexander Corda's Private Lives or whatever, because I wanted to see that Henry VIII movie that he made, which was put with Charles Lawton, which is pretty rad. Very sumptuous uh, production designs in these films. Yeah, yeah, it was just uh, money. costumes and sets. They really, you it know, was fun. Yeah, they really, you, you really kind of felt like, well, okay. I mean, I, I don't know if today people might assail the film with criticism of being, you know, whitewashed or not accurately representing whatever oh, country we're supposed to take <laughs> place in. But really, I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't think that. Because the Middle East, traditionally in storytelling, has been a place of like mysticism for people in the West. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a place yeah. of you know you know legends and magic, and mm-hmm. and it, it's a foreign. It was a foreign different place, and I think I don't think that it's necessarily inherently wrong to still you know to to appreciate a portrayal of a place as sort of a, a magical kind of you know wonderland. I don't either. You know what I mean? So uh, that was uh, that was that was it was pretty. Uh, the, the set, every, the city, everything looked really cool. Like it mm-hmm. didn't. It, it looked like a. It looked like a fantasy land or something. Yeah, it did. It was, yeah. You know, it was it was pretty bitching. So pretty good, good, uh, good, good production uh, design in this film as well. I agree. Uh, yeah. Well, anything else we should mention about the old thief of Baghdad? Well, I mean, we could uh, do the some countless people it's gone on to inspire. Uh, or... We could do some questions. We haven't done any questions on this movie. Oh yeah. Do we have any? Uh, well, how about we go on the tip really quick and uh, not counting wishing for more wishes. If you had three wishes, oh, if you shit. had the genie, what would you wish for? Real quick. Jeez. Uh, uh, Who's going first? Chris? Shit, okay. Well, I think uh, my first wish would be to have life never ending unless I wish it, unless I so want it, you know? So, immortality. All right, yeah, like optional immortality, basically. Yeah, optionality, optional, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then I think, hmm, man, I would definitely have to uh, think about those uh, that other ones. The power to grant it to anyone else, I think, would be my second wish. Hmm. That's a good one. And, man, what else do you need but, <laughs> you know. I guess uh, I could see being in a situation where no matter what you wish, something would happen in life where you'd be like, "Why didn't I wish for this?" Well, I guess yeah. Or if we get that kind of like the malicious genie type of thing, where he'll trick you. Yeah, somehow. I'm just thinking about all the loopholes now. I, well, see, I would wish for like some kind of immortality. Yeah. Uh, limitless wealth and yeah. the ability to time travel. Right. Mm. There you go. Right. Yeah, time travel. That's mm. it. Can you really? Could you really That's ask for good. more? 
Time travel is pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah. Now, we, really, you don't need the wealth, though, if you have the time travel. Well, yeah, but you put a lot yeah, of effort do. in it. You got to live stuff. somewhere. You got to call. You got to hang your hat somewhere. This way, I got to worry about like getting, you know, the sports almanac and going back in time and winning a bunch of bets, <laughs> and it's all high profile. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you do have a genie. So. What about you, Kenzie? If you had, I think that pretty much covers it. I mean, I don't know. All right. With well, with wishes. with like a fortune, like that can solve a lot of problems. Yeah, yeah. I get well health. I thought. Maybe like some kind of like you know I mean immortality kind well, of ties in with that. Yeah, but, but you wouldn't. Well, but, you, like but you could be sickly though, right? Alive. Like yeah. I don't if be it that. was like a, if it was like a twisted genie type of thing, he could make you like all sickly or something. Uh, what about the but powers then you of still necromancy? Are able to die, so it doesn't matter. I would probably go perpetual, perpetual well health, good health perpetually. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I mean, bordering on some kind of immortality, I suppose. Uh, of course, limitless wealth would be great. As far as the time machine goes, that'd be a big one for me. I think I, I would. Uh, I wouldn't want to be able to change the history, but I certainly would want to go back and interact with certain things. But I'd want to mm-hmm. be able to be safe. I'd want to be able to know, like I could bounce, like at any point. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be endangered by the past. Time maybe, maybe, maybe just dimensional shifting or something then where you just go into different time or a holodeck oh, that's scary or a holodeck that'd be pretty cool then well, but then you gotta like tell it what you want to do and it wouldn't be authentic unless it unless people had done research and it and it like had all kinds of like if i say oh i want to go to the cotton club in 1929 so you're and saying i want to see duke ellington uh, uh, is it possible that uh, without me having a program on the specifics that with the cumulative uh, uh, information that it would well, have. So you're saying rather than, rather than wish for time travel, you would wish for like a Star Trek Next Generation style oh, holiday. Well, that would be safer. Well, but that, no, I'm not saying it's a bad idea because mm. that would be a pretty but good But then I wouldn't really be witnessing history. I don't know, but that would be kind of cool. Uh, like imagine if you could have that. A like, fully uh, staffed and. Well, just like the next gen. So it would work the same way. You just tell the computer what you want yeah. and boom, you got it. What about what if you just wished for the, the Enterprise? Just the ship? Mm-hmm. I got to yeah. imagine it's the genie would fuck you okay. on some kind of logistic well, thing. Well, are you going to wish a crew in existence to run it? Yeah. So you're going to have well, to what about like hundreds fully, of lives? Like a ship and full crew. Like, I mean, I, well, okay. Uh, well, well, then would you get transported to the Star Trek universe, or are you just going to have the ship in this universe? Ship in this universe. So you're just going to sit on it and go to the holodeck all day? Just cruise around the universe. I mean, I guess you could do that, too. I mean, a working starship would be a pretty cool wish. Yeah. Well, I wish like the Millennium Falcons, you just fly it yourself, and you wouldn't need. I guess it's no holiday. Fuck the Falcon, the dude. Falcons the Enterprise kind of is way better. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> it is. It I is. Mean, maybe it is garbage. Maybe like that As one huge Star Destroyer, that one Vader Star Destroyer, the Super Star Destroyer, yeah, Super Star Destroyer, That'd be kind of cool, or the Emperor Star Destroyer. Yeah. Okay. I thought yeah, it was. That's uh, it. I thought it was interesting too how the genie said when he gets freed that for the first thousand years he was going to reward the person who let him out, mm, and right. for the second thousand years he was going to curse the person. Right. So what do you guys think if you were in that context that you were the genie, would you be stoked and reward the first person? Reward him unle- unless or would you well, be like, like I am just going to kill the first thing I see a, when I get out of here. Unless it's going to like unless he's got to like donate a kidney or a nut or something yeah. to make a wish happen. Like if, if it's not going to if it's nothing for a fucking just you know what I mean? Do it. Hook them up. They'll let you out. dude. Why would you curse them? Oh, you finally let me out. Even though you had nothing to do with me being in here, that's what no, I'm saying. No bearing on it whatsoever, and all you did was stumble across me and free me. I'm going to punish you now. Yeah, well, that's fucking be ridiculous. Kind of cynical about it, and maybe like fuck with people. Well, that was a point. It was like no, a dick a, move. A but years a long time. like he was, you know, he was bitter. Yeah, from his yeah. 2000 I think it's years. kind of an explanation of why he does things the way he does. You know, kind of like where I guess he's not too dickish in this one. He's I okay. Think, I think in the original stories, maybe he was. Real dick. Well, it's funny. It seems like it's almost part of the genie trope where they're usually assholes. Yeah. Like I read the original like book the time they that, that Who Framed Roger Rabbit you. is based on has a genie in it, and that mm-hmm. genie's a real dick. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe Wait. that's. So and the Twilight Zone, too. Every that? time. Yeah, it, it's, it's just fucking batshit. Well, it's because it's, really it's like, weird. oh, yeah, Trust you can me, have wishes, man. but it's like at a price. Yeah, because there's the man in the bottle, the Twilight Zone episode. That guy's a real asshole. Like, mm-hmm. it seems like it's, for the most part, it seems like genies are kind of overall pricks. Yeah. yeah. It seems like, I guess that's, that's, that's what isolation will do to you. That's, yeah, Over it's time, getting yeah. trapped yeah. in the bottle type of thing. That's the problem. Yeah. No social. I'm genies surprised. are yeah. ugly. I guess, uh, who was the guy in I Dream of Genie? Major, whatever. I guess he uh, lucked out. Ma- oh. oh Jesus! It was wasn't it Larry Hagman? No, yeah. Well, no. It was, it was uh, Darren. Oh, why the fuck? 
I, I can't keep, think of the Bewitched. I keep the, no, be, Dick, Darren was Dick Sergeant. Bewitched. It was Dick Sergeant and it was two um, dicks, wasn't it? No, oh. but that's in Bewitched. I'm talking about Dream of Genie. Oh, it was Larry Hagman. Yeah, Genie. it was Larry Hagman because he was the astronaut. Oh yeah, right. Major Nelson. What Major Nelson. Name? That's it. And Gene, not only was Genie not pissed off, but she was hot, so he lucked out. Oof. You, you think? could do a lot worse than being yeah. him. Yeah. Man, I dream of Genie. Oh, <laughs> it would have been cool Fucking if a. Genie Mama was me. who shot Jr. That would have been like funny. Sort of weird. Like that, that was all his wish. That's one of his wishes. Genie, yeah. you know what to do. Go Take out the, Jr. You know Go into the future and do. shoot me. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, is there anything else we should discuss about this film before we uh, put it in the books? No, nah, I think that's pretty much it. Just yeah, it's worth seeing. Okay. Take all right. Uh, new theme coming soon. Uh, new movies, and we got a bunch of shit coming up. Filmstain.com. Like us on the SoundCloud. On Post the your Facebook. comments too. Uh, seeing a lot of listens, not a lot of comments. You got something to say? You like what you hear? You don't like what you hear? Sound say off. It. Seeing this movie and you've got your own opinion, please post in the comments. Not that we'll listen, but say it anyways. Yeah. For the Cinema Marijuana Theater, I'm Ed. I'm Kenzie and I'm delicate, so everyone has to leave only please. nice comments. Uh, oh, about no. Me. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that's, I think that's how the internet I works. I think that's just yeah, no incite mother- no that's just, comments, just no mean comments. Just no incite sure. motherfuckers <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to say mean shit now. You, oh, damn it. They totally are going to. You can't let them know you got yeah. a thin skin. Just don't read the comments. No. You don't have to well, read Well, that them. means I'm like the ruler. If I can say something like that and have them do the opposite. Yeah. You pretty much. I rule. Yeah, I guess so. You you control them. Yes. All right. All right. I'm John. On that note. I'm Chris. I'm, I'm not your ruler. <laughs> <laughs> I rule you. All right. Yeah. We'll be back with more wonderful greatness soon. Thanks for listening. As I'm a column, all of column B. I'm in the mood to help you, dude. You ain't never had a friend like me. 